If he starts eating, check. I mean. Check, check, check. Mark, can you hear me? Jimmy. Do you hear me, Mark? You're, you're gotten brighter, but it's still only at four par. Four par. Four. 350. Four. You're still only at four par. Okay. But we've got twice as many lights on your tank. We turned yep. up the intensity. The other thing we want to look at is the par readings and see what kind of compounding we get. Because when you want more light in your tank, one way is to add more lights. The other way is to just replace the light you have with a more powerful light. Yeah. But I found it's best to keep the same type of light, same make, same model across the tank. Right. That way, this blue from this manufacturer looks the same as the light next to it. If we have right. different lights from all different manufacturers, they end up looking different. I've tried it. It's not fun. So we've added more of the same lights to get that compounding, but to keep the look the same. Okay. Okay. Compounding meaning two lights overlapping. Yep. Okay. Exactly. So everyone knows what's your intensity right now? So the way these lights work is they have four different colors mm -hmm. from zero to 100. Right. So my white light is at 100. Okay. And then my colors I have at 50, 30, and 30. So Brian, who's one of our guys who helps with the Coral Farm, very experienced guy, also does the customer service for it, he set up your schedule for you. Let's just do a sweep across the top of the tank to give people an idea what kind of compounding levels we're getting out of them. So if we're way over here on the far right side of your tank, at the water line, on the center line of these lights, we're at 65, okay? We move about halfway over, all of a sudden, we're at 200. I can, I can even see the pattern. When yeah. you moved it, I could see that it was brighter. We're right underneath it, 470. So we're gonna go about equidistant off this side. Now we're at 280, because we're getting some compounding off okay, of this so one. Okay, so now we're getting the, the triangle of both of these. Yep, the intersection, yep, the compounding. Yep. We put it under here, we're at 570, 5, 90 actually because we're getting again this compounding, compounding from, this from one. that one those are closer than a little bit two. from this one too yeah we put it between the two and fall off a little bit but only about 480. okay okay then we go underneath here we're back up to the 570 ish yeah makes sense right and we go between these you know 420 yeah force and then over here on its own we're about 475 and then we run into the same thing over here, off to the edge, we're about 70. Okay. Okay? So you really get an idea of the compounding. Now, for people at home who don't have a PAR meter, again, that's okay. We're showing you this, so as you look at your tank, you can get an idea of how compounding works and get a feel for it. Because PAR meters are great. You don't have to have this to know and get a baseline of how you sh and where you should place your corals. And in some of it's just feel. You're like, I think this should be here. I'm going to stick it there and then see how it goes. Don't be afraid to move it. Go for that. Okay. So right here in the center where we have two lights compounding, we're about, oh, six, eight inches underwater. We're at 255, which is fine for okay. this deep of tank, where we are in the tank. You've got an SPS coral here. Now the Cespitularia, your Vargas coral, as you like to call it. Vargas. Yeah. Like, right? Like that's getting 165 par. It's not going to hurt it. It doesn't need that much, so it can be moved away. So we can bring up one of these harder corals, like the Satosa down here, and put it up there that wants a light. It really needs a light to really do its best. And that's what I need to know, because I just put these in random, without knowing anything. So if you know, if you can help educate me on the different corals, we can move some of them around to higher in the water column here, where they get more light. Right, and the key to this is, if you don't have a PAR meter at home, you're fine. You don't have to have this to figure out where you should place corals. We're doing it to show the intensity of the lightings. Look, if you have access to one of these, sure, use it. Don't get caught up in the numbers, but you don't have to have this to place your corals correctly. Let's go down here at these SPS guys, which is, well, let's call it 14 inches under the water level here. Off to the side, we're getting some shadowing on that rock. We're at 145. Okay. Now, several people on the first show are worried about your clam. 
thinking it wasn't getting enough light. He's kind of in the same place he's always been. Right, which at the time, it wasn't quite getting enough, but it was fine. It's down here getting 100-ish, right at 110-ish par on the sand bed. The basic rule of thumb is that if you're getting 100 par on the sand bed, you're probably all right for the rest of your tank and whatever needs to grow on the sand bed. The hammer coral. The hammer coral's doing really good. So it's right under it getting about 200. Okay, so it's, yeah, right under the light, sort of. And this is where if you don't have a par meter, you can use these concepts. Right under the light, you're gonna get the most light. It's kind of like, duh, yeah? yeah like, a lot right? of people miss that. But over here, we're kind of only under one light. We're not getting much compounding from this one. We're off to the side of the light as well. You can expect that to get less light or at like 150 right here. So as you're looking at your tank, you don't have a par meter, that's fine. And be like directly under the light, that's gonna get me the most. Or if I have compounding between them, it's gonna get me a lot of light. Like right there is 250, 270-ish. Off to the side, it's gonna give you less light. And of course, when you go lower, you get less light too. Right. Having a meter, I'm really kind of surprised how drastic the changes are moving from under the light toward the front of the tank. Yeah, and you can, that's good. Like, I don't want the same light all the way across the tank because this gives me zones and places to put different types of Well, you, you can't put your hand up there and really know what, what the focus beam is. Yeah. I mean, I can see, but um, it's not, and, and it's not focused, it's diffused, right? It's the soft. It's a soft light, so so it's hard for me to tell what the pattern is now, one and how thing, much it falls off. Even if you don't have the meter, one thing you can do at home is if you stir your sand, or siphoning your sand, or you know, kind of stir things up a little yeah. bit, get more particulates in the water. You can see more of the cone of light oh, and yeah, it'll sure. give you an idea. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, this Duncan over here, who's way off to the side, no compounding at all, it's getting about 125. Now, someone's saying, wait a minute. You're 175 here, 125 ish here. It's more off to the side and it's deeper. This is another trick. You're going to get some light bouncing off the tank, coming back in. Oh, wow, yeah. Reflecting back. So don't discount the stuff off to the side. It could be getting more light than you think. Yeah, because it's, it's uh, basically acting like a mirror in here. Down here, 80. All right. Okay. So what about this Gorgonian over here that's off to the side? It's getting about 70, 80. Let's go into the front corner here on the sand bed. Look, we're at 100. This leather guy up here. Let me ask you about that. It's getting 160. What, is there such thing as just way too much light? Yeah, but for most corals, the range is pretty dang big. Like your okay. zoanthids, they can go in low light. I, might, I would put them like down here up front where you can see them and really enjoy them, they're gonna be happy at around 85 par. If you put yeah. them up top, like you got these up here, they're getting 170-ish, they're gonna be happy too. So you got along a wide range on a lot of these corals. Okay. Now, if you start getting into 400 par, you're really blasting things. Most tanks don't need that much light. It's just gonna cause issues with coral bleaching and growing algae. I just love looking at people's tanks where they got the big corals in there. I mean, it's exciting having all these new corals. They look great, but I can't wait till they kind of- Grow in? Grow in. Yep. Yeah. And you know, a lot of them, none of these are cemented in. The little plugs, mm -hmm. there's not a really good way to hold them in some of this rock. Like, like if over on this peak, I'd like to put something over here but what's the best way to, to get one of those plugs to stay there? Cut it off. Cut the plug off? Mm -hmm. Or cut the coral off the plug. And then glue, glue it? Yeah. Because I, I have some glue. Yeah. And then glue it to there, huh? Yeah. And then the glue, will it, um, will I be able to move them again without damaging them too much? So that's part of what I do, in it, especially with newbies. You want to glue it down enough that it holds, but you don't want to go crazy with the glue such that if you want to move it, you can't just pop it off. Okay. So hold it steady, but don't make it permanent. But based on what we just learned um, using a par meter, and you said you don't have to have one of that, what would be some good advice for me with these corals? Or should I move some things in here? All right, a couple of things. Your hardcore SPS guys here, your Satosa, your Stylo, we're going to move them up. Okay. They want a lot of light. They also want a lot of flow, which is higher up. So we're going to move those guys up. Other corals don't need so much light, like this Lobo, it can go lower down. 
Zoanthids can certainly go lower down. Suspicularia, we're going to put on its own rock. This Favia is good up here. The Slicinularia could go, but it's attached, so just leave it for now. Hammer is fine. I'm fine with all of these. Now, the other piece of this is when we're looking at corals, like, yeah, that Zoanthid could go down here. But you're like, you know what? I really like that Zoanthid. I like where it is. It's going to add some variety of color and different types of coral. I'm going to leave it there. You can do that too. This is all guidelines. It's going to guide you. Then you can add in your own personal flavors and tastes. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay. And the really cool thing is the clam's going to stay where it is. I just want to rotate it 90 degrees so you can get a shot down, look, looking down the ax, long axis of the clam, because then it, let's really, really get to see the colors and really enjoy it.